Hey there creepy peeps and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about the clove hitch killer. So the clove hitch killer, also known as just clove hitch as a movie, uh, was recommended to me by one of my patrons, Scuba Steve. So thank you very much for your request and let's get into this. So directed by Duncan Skiles, The Clove Hitch Killer follows a teenage boy who begins to suspect his wholesome, all-American dad is actually a serial killer infamous to a small town. So I feel like serial killers and like true crime tends to like, is like the theme right now. You know what I mean? Like that's very on trend. Like with all this Ted Bundy stuff going on, abducted in plain sight, all that stuff. Like I feel like it's very on trend right now. And normally I feel like there's this very fine line between romanticizing these criminals and just not bringing anything new to the table. Do you know what I mean? This movie is different though. I like how the movie took the point of view of the family of the killer. Um, and it seems similar to this book that recently came out at work. Um, cause I remember it cause I've like walked past it 15 million times and I really want to read it. It's called the serial killer's daughter or serial killer's daughter or something to that effect which is written by the daughter of btk um and just all i've read is the the summary of the book um so i haven't actually read it yet but it seems like it's kind of like along the same lines like just her remembering her life with her father and how she you know like never once suspected that he was a serial killer this movie kind of like feels the same like when i was watching it i was like it feels like that book um <laughs> so i don't know if i don't know officially if that's what this was based on or if that's what this was inspired by but they do seem to have a lot of similarities interesting and i like that point of view and that's why i really wanted to read the book as well i love how normal the dad is and like we just need to talk about for a split second how unrecognizable dylan mcdermott is in this movie <laughs> like i saw in the credits like you, you know it's like you see how dylan mcdermott is in the movie and i'm kind of just like sitting there like okay cool like i wonder when he's gonna show up and then it like i realized he was the dad the whole time and i'm like oh my god <laughs> They didn't even, it's like, they did nothing crazy to him. It's not like he has like these crazy prosthetics on or anything that make him look different. He just looks like so completely normal. <laughs> like he straight up looks like he could be one of my neighbors. Like, so he's like unrecognizable in the strangest, most normal way. And that's what makes it like more believable. Like, because there's no really, even though Dylan McDermott is a recognizable face, he seems very unrecognizable in the movie and everybody else isn't really like a huge star. So there's really no huge stars or you don't notice them any, like they not like, like they don't take away from the performance. Like sometimes when you get like really big stars in the movie, they kind of take away from the story. I don't want to have this preconceived notion, but I feel like that's kind of what's going to happen with the Zac Efron, Ted Bundy thing. The subdued color palette and the uh, lack of soundtrack during key parts also drive home like how realistic this movie feels. Um, especially like during the high points of the movie, like the part where the killer is discovered, that's all I'll say um, <laughs> without spoiling too much. There's the part where the killer is discovered and there's obviously a confrontation um, with our main character and the killer and there is no music at all during that entire thing. And it just feels super realistic like <laughs> almost unsettling you know it's almost unsettling like how real this feels you know what i mean the movie is definitely a slow burn um and i just say that because i know a lot of y'all who are like regular viewers don't necessarily like the slow burns which is fine i'm just you know letting you know i will say the movie ends about how you would expect it to though i wouldn't say it necessarily offers any new revelations um, it's just a different point of view that we don't get a lot when it comes to true crime. That's the same with like a lot of other true crime docos and things like that where, you know, like if I'm watching something about, I don't know, John Wayne Gacy or something or Eileen Warnos, like, you know how that's going to end ultimately. So it's like at the end of the day, there's not really any new revelations or new ideas being brought to the table. It's just interesting to watch. And that's kind of like how the movie is. It slowly builds not to nothing but it's just it, it ends how you would expect it to that's all i'm trying to get at so it's like maybe not necessarily the most exciting slow burn you know there's not some huge twist or anything like that it just kind of ends and normally i wouldn't like that there are lots of examples of slow burns that kind of amount to nothing and i end up ultimately not liking them but in this movie it works 
somehow. And it might be maybe the construction of the plot, like it's not just a straightforward timeline. It does jump back and forth in time. Again, that's all I'll say without spoiling anything. I think if it just went in a straight line the whole time, I think I would have, I would be singing a different tune right now. Yeah. So overall, I feel like this is a good a good movie that not a lot of people are talking about. I know Emma recently reviewed it, so if she didn't convince you to watch this movie, maybe I can convince you to watch this movie. It's really good. Uh, it's like summer of 84 without the annoying 80s nostalgia. So that being said, I'm gonna give it a four out of five. I liked it way more than summer of 84. I don't know why this turned into some sort of comparison. Um, on IMDb, it has a 6.6 .6 out of 10. On Rotten Tomatoes, it has a 74% critic score and a 69% audience score. And on Letterboxd, it has a 3.4 out of five. If you wanna check it out, it is available on Amazon, so I'll leave an affiliate link in the description. Um, no pressure to use that link, but it does help out the channel if you do. Um, I highly recommend you watch it, no matter where you watch it. I don't care if you use that affiliate link or not. Um, <laughs> you should definitely check it out. If you've seen it already, let me know in the comment section down below what you thought about it. As always, I do hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new here and become a creepy peep today. Uh, you can ring that notification bell down there to be notified every time I post a video, even though it almost never works. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, stay strange. Bye! This video is brought to you by all of these awesome Patreon supporters who are listed here on the screen. Thank you guys so much for your support. Um, if you want to find out the perks to being a creepy patron peep, you can follow that link that's in the description box. And if you want to check out more videos, you can click the video that's on the screen right now.